Hi guys, good to have you join us on our show today. I'm Glory Okun. We'd like to start today with the ex Big Brother Africa, Tyre Vadero, who briefed journalists in Abuja during a press conference put together by Nigerians in the Asphora Commission on how he was attacked by the police in South Africa. Let's listen to him and I'll be right back. On this day, it was unfortunate because I actually missed my way from where the cops were. But something just happened. I just had to come back to that place. And, you know, when it happened when I was in the cell, I was thinking maybe I should have avoided it. Maybe I, I shouldn't have turned back. But then something kept on telling me that there's something positive that is coming out of this. And the positivity that I want out of this is the change. I've started a movement on Say No to Xenophobia under the platform of Odudua Classics, which is my own brand. And I've been preaching, I've been teaching people because the main reason and the cause, or the, the reason why xenophobia still exists today in Africa, is uh, in South Africa, is because there is a lack of information. Um, many people there, they feel like they are entitled to hate Nigerians because they don't have enough reasons why they should love us. They, they, there's no information at all. You, you will never see any billboard in South Africa that says, say no to xenophobia, or maybe newspaper, or whatever. There is nothing like that. That was what triggered me. I've been harassed uh, many times, but I've never been beaten before. And uh, I started to think that, I mean, being in, in South Africa, I'm there for positive reasons, and I'm contributing my own uh, positive quarter into it, and I make sure that I'm a law-abiding citizen. Then why should I just fold my arms and see things get uh, destroyed, you know. And I know that although we may have some bad eggs out of Nigeria, but we have some, so many great Nigerians out there in South Africa and even here. And because of this incident, I've met with people personally who have actually told me that I don't want to ever go to South Africa again. And this pains my heart so much because the land of South Africa has actually provided me a second home. And it has blessed me. South Africa can never be taken out of my life. And uh, this is the reason why I say no to xenophobia, and I will not back down. And I assure the world, because I believe I'm standing in front of the world today, that I have the resources. And with the right support, ma, I can eradicate xenophobia. Maybe in two years, maybe in three years, but please put me to test. I know everything about xenophobia. And you see, one thing about this again is that people think I'm a brave guy. In, in something in South Africa today, if I go out, they say, our Mandela. I say the Mandela that I will not go to jail for 27 years. <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it by war or by violence or by uh, being uh, disrespectful or out of bitterness or anger. I cannot teach people to love if I'm demonstrating uh, bitterness and hatred, you know. So what I want to do is that the vengeance that I want from what happened here is to, to, to show love more to South Africans, to let them see why we should all come together. Please, journalists, do not edit this. Say it the way I'm saying it, that South Africans, henceforth, should leave Nigeria with all their businesses. Nigerian students are not joking about it. And we are giving seven days ultimatum for this action to be carried out. Diplomacy has failed. Diplomacy has failed. We must, we all must come to that conclusion, because the sanctity of human life has been defiled. The value of human life has been reduced to nothing. When we talk about 128, which have also risen within the past few days, we are not talking about goats. We are not talking about chickens. We are talking about human beings. Human beings that are going about their normal businesses. And when they want to bamboozle us, they will tell us that it is Nigerians that are killing Nigerians. Please arrest the Nigerians that have been killing Nigerians in South Africa. And prosecute them. Let us see them being prosecuted. Repatriate them to this country and let's do the needful. No South African can be killed in this country and our government will keep quiet without enforcing the laws and order of this country. It is not done. South Africa has become a banana republic where everything obtains. We can't take that. We can't allow our people to be killed continuously. And it will shock you that because of what is happening in South Africa, other con countries are beginning to follow suit, thinking that Nigerians don't have value. Kill them, nothing will happen. After all, they are killing them in hundreds in South Africa. 
It is unfortunate. Nigerians' students will not be party to that. We have decided no going back. Enough is enough. We specifically want multi-choice. Big IBTC Bank is a South African bank. We know how much they get on a daily basis from our country. And they repatriate all these profits back to South Africa. It does not function on our land. The only thing we benefit is tax, which they don't pay. Also, the salary of those that work. The relationship between us and them is like that of serfs and lords, for those who understand political terms. Slave and lords. That is the only relationship that exists between Nigerians and the South African businesses. We cannot continue to be slaves. We also have the right to control more MTN. We know what multi-choice has been doing to us. It is only in Nigeria that multi-choice charge pay on whether you use it or not. It is reading. We have not taken up arms against them. On this note, we are also asking for the closure of ShopRite, telling our people in South Africa to relocate back to Nigeria. There are businesses for you here in Nigeria. We can occupy MTN and run the businesses and use the money to maintain our country. And cut the hell of what is happening in South Africa. Come back home, Nigerians. Come back to your country home. We also use this opportunity to state that it will no longer be business as usual. Nigerians must rise up to the occasion. For us, Nigerian students, we have risen up. Some people, we, the naysayers, will ask, why are we using this means? Because of their selfish interests, because of their business interests. It is only those that are alive that can make profit. It is only those that are alive that can have businesses. Let me also tell you that the businesses, properties of Nigerians in South Africa that are being killed have been looted, carted away by the old lums. Yeah. It is not just the killing. They loot them. They destroy everything that has to do with them. We are not fools. Of the greatest Nigerian students, yes. we want to say finally that to this end, we announced the commencement of Operation Clamp Down on South African businesses and South Africans in Nigeria. Soli, 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 solidarity forever. We shall always fight for our right. Welcome back. It's really not funny anymore the way the South Africans are treating Nigerians in their country. While we're here providing a conducive environment for them to have their businesses, well, let's now hear what Honorable Abike Dabere Erewa has to say about what is happening with Nigerians over there. And I'll be right back. Up till about 2016, We've had about 118 Nigerians killed in South Africa. Between 2016 and today, 88 Nigerians have been killed in South Africa. Although out of these 88, um, I think 25 were cases of Nigerians killing Nigerians. And then we had the case of Elizabeth Chuku, who was murdered in her hotel room. Now, this is what we demand. Eight policemen are currently being investigated in South Africa for their involvement in killings against Nigerians. That, was, that investigation must come to an end, mm. and there must yeah. be consequences for the actions. Mm. Yeah. Now, the two policemen that did this to Tayo, they already been investigated by the um, investigating body that deals with police officers in South Africa. We must know the outcome of the investigation. We also must know who killed Mrs. Elizabeth Chuku, who went for a conference and died in our hotel room. Now, we know that every country has their own challenges. We have ours. They have theirs. But killing other people is not the solution to anything. Mm -hmm. If a Nigerian commits a crime, you deal with them. And then like Tayo said, we just have to put an end to, to xenophobia in Africa. It's a shame that in the 21st century, we're talking about Africans killing Africans. Rather than talking about Africans going to the moon, mm -hmm. doing inventions, taking over the world, this cannot be allowed to happen. Mm -hmm. So Tayo, maybe we'll call you the... Uh, mm -hmm. 
champion of say no to xenophobia. Nigeria must unite. Nigeria, Nigeria, Kosa, Nigeria, Kosa, Nigeria. Welcome back. We also had a chat with the Gambia ambassador on his experience in Nigeria so far, Ambassador Amadou Ta. Let's listen to him and I'll be right back. So I had the opportunity of meeting with various uh, and government uh, officials. You know. Then also I had the opportunity of meeting with other colleagues that is ambassadors and high commissioners based here in Abuja. And uh, we have had lots of meetings, interactions and so on. And I have, I have found them to be very useful, especially when I just arrived. You know, I mean, having, I mean, not having much experience working in Nigeria, but you know, with the cooperation I've, I've had with my colleagues, and also with um, members of the the Nigerian government, I have had you know you know a lot of ideas, and uh, I've had lo lots of interactions, and I, I found them to be very useful. So I believe Nigeria is a very vast country; it's, it's huge, both in terms of you know land mass and also in terms of population. But I believe there is uh, beauty in diversity. The Gambia and Nigeria have had relations dating way back, uh, even before the colonial days, I believe. But Relations, the, the 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 government relations, I mean, actually started, I believe, when we achieved our independence. But Nigerians and Gambians have been, you know, I mean, working working together. They have been interacting. I mean, through trade. I mean, through religion, and also cultures. You know, I mean, before before we got our independence, you'll find out that um, we have so many things in common. I mean, culturally, there are so many things that are done here in Nigeria, which are found in the Gambia. I mean, in terms of religion also, we share so many things in common. So Nigeria and the Gambia are very close but when it comes to culture, traditions, religion, and so on. As far as we are concerned here in the Gambia High Commission, we want to encourage Nigerians to go and visit the Gambia, as many Nigerians as we can. Now, we've already started the discussions with the Director General of the National, I mean, National Council for Arts and Culture here in Nigeria. And the plan is that we will pay a visit to the Gambia and he will go with a team of uh, journalists, you know, and uh, those who are in the area of culture and music and so on. And they will go at least for one week and have a look at what is actually in the Gambia. That, I mean, that is just the starting point. But the idea is to try and encourage, I mean, uh, bilateral relations in the area of music, culture, and art. So this is going to be worked out. But, the idea, but what we have in mind is before the end of this year, the uh, Director General of the National Council for Arts and Culture will want to go with a team. And I, and I believe you also will be part of the team. Uh, I mean, part of the team. So you will go to the 
Gambia and then have a look at you know the things that Gambia can offer in the area of tourism and uh, I think uh, the plan is to leave say around November or December. I love all types of foods. I love Nigerian food. Any Nigerian food you give me, I love it. This Eba, I mean Abala, you know, I mean uh, this uh, all these foods that you have, these traditional foods, I love them because, especially the ones that have vegetables, you know, I love the vegetable soup. I also love the goat meat soup. You know, these are nice foods. So for me, I always love to eat traditional foods. So anywhere you take me, if you take me to the south, I can eat their food. If you take me to the east, I can eat their food. If you take me to the north, I love their food. So I love everything. Welcome back. Omnix on our show is the formal opening of the Econet Biennial Symposium and General Assembly meeting held in Abuja. Enjoy it. I'll be right back. Election managers and experts from the West African sub-region and beyond all gathered in Abuja for the 6th Biennial General Assembly of the ECOWAS Network of Electoral Commissions. This year's edition began with a symposium on the theme promoting inclusivity in the electoral process. The was formed in February 2008 in Guinea-Conakry through the encouragement of ECOWAS. It was felt at the, time, at the time that given the enormous challenges of organizing elections in our sub-region, there should be a forum for electoral commissions to collaborate with one another through peer learning and peer support. The ECOWAS Commission, at the time led by His Excellency Mohammed Ibn Chambers, worked so hard to ensure that the idea gained traction, leading to the formation of the forum. ECOS has collaborated extensively with ECONEC in recent years because we truly believe that supporting networks of electoral management bodies is the best approach to foster peer knowledge, knowledge and comparative experience to strengthen democracy. The INEC resident electoral commissioner from a boy state, Professor Goswell Obioma, had this to say. The pathway to good elections should, in, should be inclusive of all uh, eligible voters, especially women, youths, and uh, the people, persons with uh, disabilities. And in any case, too, um, how to use them to achieve violence in elections, how to make sure election environment secure by including these participants I've mentioned and by ensuring that they're also fully participate in the process. So I think the team is very good. Uh, it's healthy for Africa, it's healthy for West Africa, and indeed it's healthy for Nigeria. Speaking before declaring the three days meeting open, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, who represented the President, said the meeting showed signs of steady progress in ensuring that all segments of society have a voice in the management of public affairs, especially through the democratic process. It is also an indication that in spite of the progress achieved so far, more needs to be done by governments through legislation, by political parties, through affirmative action in the nomination of candidates for election, and by all stakeholders through unrelenting advocacy for greater inclusion of all segments of society in the democratic and electoral processes. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy our show. That's how far we can go for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Glory Okun. See you next time. Bye for now.